of model making has captured the imagination of modellers and rail enthusiasts for generations. Many start with the basics of buying a ready-built locomotive to run, but for most, the enthusiasm for the hobby is sown in childhood Rain. memories. Rain. 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 A familiar sight for many is the train set on the carpet in front of the fire, the only spare space in the house. For generations, the train set has remained at the centre of childhood, allowing a father and son to bond, creating precious memories for the young and bringing back memories for the old. For some, the toy is left in childhood, but for others, it's a starting point of a hobby, craft and near obsession as they journey into later life. This is the story of the children who never grew out of trains who work to recreate something that time has forgotten, altered or dismantled, preserving Britain's heritage one railway scene at a time. Uncle Tom used to take me each day when he was working down the station. I'd be heaving sacks, cleaning railway lamps, shinning up poles, taking lamps down out the signal. Oh, we wait for them. Yeah. It's one of those hobbies. You need people who can build scenery, build woodwork, do the electrics, handle a soldering iron and some people just enjoy running the trains. Put all your time into it very quickly and produce something which you can run engines or you can spend years, over many years. It becomes a lifetime hobby. The hobby caters for a range of different skills and suits a wide spectrum of people, from those who buy ready-made models to scratch modellers who make everything from raw materials. We get some wire wool and spread it over each branch. Lincoln and District Model Railway Club have been meeting for over 30 years and work together to preserve scenes to exhibition standard. But for some, the skill of model making is more than just a hobby. It's a distraction from everyday life. About eight years ago, um, I lost my son and I couldn't work. I couldn't keep the concentration of design engineering at work. So I came back to the hobby and started, I find it very therapeutic to, to manufacture, to make things from scratch. And when you're making something, you don't uh, have time to think of other things. So it's a good drop out of, of, the, of the stress of life, if you like. And if you think they don't take things seriously, listen to this. That's N gauge, which is four millimetres to the floor. No, it isn't, it's two. Two, two, two millimetres to the foot. That's O gauge, which is seven millimetres to the foot. So what is double O? It's a bit unfair, really, to the uninitiated. Yeah, O gauge is seven millimetres to the foot. They brought out H O gauge, which is part O, which is 3.5 millimetres to a foot. But the British engines at that time were too small to put the electric motors in. So we went to 4 millimetres to a foot. We used HO track, but the locomotives are 4 millimetres to a foot and not 3.5. And they call it double O. And then they call it double O. So if O is 7 millimetres and double O Where they got should the 7 be millimetres to a foot from, I don't know. I mean, what stupid idiot thought of 7 millimetres to 12 inches? Why didn't they go to a quarter of an inch to a foot? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you would be natural. Preserved in model is 1960s Lincoln, a scene that now exists in photographs, documents, and people's memories. Two and a half years ago, John Whiteside set himself the task of creating a double O gauge replica of Lincoln Central to preserve a piece of history which is no longer there. It's quite hard to explain to the younger generation when they come and go, well, that isn't there. Why have you got that on there? And that's when you can get into the conversation and say, well, this is what it used to be like. Um, this is a representation of, of what it was and not what it is. But with any hobby comes a commitment of time and money. So how much money has John spent? Do you really want to know the answer to that? <laughs> uh, so far, um, I'd say a good ten to fifteen thousand.
But with public perception of the rail enthusiast as a train spotting anorak, John hopes he alters opinion on the craft he is trying to achieve. It's the 1930s and a young Australian has settled in this country. And to his horror, he saw this building, the old Cali Arms, alter from an idyllic thatched roof to a tiled pink asbestos roof. Roy England felt so distraught at the change, he decided to try and recapture its appearance in model form. The model was to become the foundation of an idea which would capture the landscape and architecture from the Vale of the White Horse as it existed in the 1930s. Pender Museum in South Oxfordshire today holds this model, which is still being constructed. The landscape includes Roy England's original model of the Cali Arms and a model of Pendon's founder, Roy England himself. Despite Roy England's death in 1995, the Trust continued to develop his vision and strive to complete the model, although it will take several generations of modellers to work towards its completion. But what does Pendon mean to the volunteers and why is it so important? You better turn the sound off. It's a geriatric drop-in club on Tuesdays. <laughs> Using photographs and exact measurements of each building recorded by Roy in the 1930s, these dedicated volunteers have continued to expand his vision of the preserved British countryside. Our founder took copious notes, drawings and measurements and photographs of the various buildings he wanted for this scene and we still use those notes. Just like every stage of the modeler's spectrum, Pendon attracts many different skilled modelers, but they all have to pass the privy test. But we have the privy test piece to check whether you're uh, able to do things. So um, there's not much you can really do wrong here. You can make it look slightly wrong if you paint it the wrong colors or anything else, but basically anybody who can wield a pair of scissors can do this. And the main problem, of course, is being ancient, is, is contorting yourself into the position in which you see me at this very moment. So what does the future hold for Pendon? We hope that we will complete the scene, but we hope that it will continue as it does and continue to provide entertainment for people, interest for people, um, and they will continue to appreciate the work that, uh, that has been done here. Rail enthusiasts will continue to live with the stereotype of the platform train spotter but they strive to prove that the hobby has no boundaries, is open to all with an interest, and is vital to record and preserve Britain's history. I have no interest in taking down train numbers, going to stand on the end of a platform and watching trains. It just doesn't do anything for me. I've been interested in railways in one form or another all my life, I guess. Uh, it's one of those things that you acquire in childhood, and if you do, it never, never leaves. It may go away for a bit, but it always comes back again. <laughs>